Hey girls and guys, it's Presley, and today in this video, I'm going to be talking about books I wish I'd never read, like to begin with, or not at all. But before I get into this week's video, I like to mention a video that I deleted a long time ago called, I'm Not Reviewing All of My Books, and there's a reason why I deleted it. It's because when I looked back at that video and watched it, I realized that I'm going to review whatever book I want. I realized I don't have to talk um, talk about every single book. I can just talk about whatever books I've read or whether if I like them or dislike them. And I try to give three reasons why I didn't want to review all of my books, but I ended up giving two reasons. So I deleted that video because it's pointless. And also, forgive me if I mispronounce any of these authors' names of these books that I'm going to mention because I feel bad whenever I mispronounce names. And also, spoiler alert for any of you guys who haven't read any of these books that I'm going to mention. So click off this video if you guys don't like spoilers. So anyway, on to the first book. The first book I wish I'd never read to begin with is Her Darkest Secret by Jessica R. Patch. Now the look of this cover looks like it's going to be pretty interesting. But a I know they say don't judge a book by its cover, but let's be honest. We all like to judge books by their covers, whether it be actual books or even people in general. But as soon as I read this book, I've actually read it and it's not what I hoped it would be. Like the, the, the story is so boring, the characters are boring, and this looks like a book I could have read in high school. Like if this book was re um, released while I was in high school. But this, re this book was released as soon as I got out of high school. So this book has no sex, no swearing. It only involves murder. I know this um, sex and swearing stuff in um, adult books probably don't matter, but for some people it probably does. But eh, this book, not so good. Anyway, on to the second book. The second book I wish I never read to begin with is The Mother-in-Law by Kirsten Malachin. Now again, Judging a book by its cover here, this book looks like the mother-in-law could be a very menacing character. Like, the mother-in-law seems like she could have killed a lot of people and buried them in her basement or could have done something much worse. But as soon as I finished the book, this book turned out to be a very confusing family drama situation. It never seemed like a thriller. Some of the parts in this book were kind of shocking, but not really it's just this whole family drama shit in this book was so confusing. It scrambled my brain. It was, it was just not great. This book, pretty bad. So anyway, on to the third and hopefully final book. The third book I wish I never read to begin with is Sweet Temptation by Cora Rayleigh. Now, I immediately read this book right after Bully. And after I read Bully... I was thinking, you know what, I want to try to find books that are similar to Bully. Like, similar story, kind of. And then I ended up stumbling upon Sweet Temptation. And I thought this book was going to be somewhat similar to Bully, but I was completely wrong. This book is nothing like Bully at all. And a little trigger warning for any of you guys who love this book, because I'm about to shit all over this book, because I hate this book with a passion. This book is a mafia romance, which I know nothing about the mafia to begin with. Um, and it involves two main characters, um, a 30 year old man who lost his wife, his previous wife, and he has to marry someone else because you know, he needs to stay in business. And a main female character who immediately turned 18, like her parents, the 18 year old girl's parents, never give her time to actually be an 18 year old girl. Her parents tell, tell her, hey, you have to marry this 30 year old mafia dude who you never met. And that is, I know marriages can be different, but marrying someone you just met is, is a Disney movie, is a Disney movie cliche if I ever heard one, but this book is nothing close to a Disney movie whatsoever. Um, the other, the, the worst, the other worst parts, they're coming, it gets worse. It involves an, um, an abusive relationship between the two main characters because the main male character, the 30-year-old man, he's got some issues. 
real big issues, and I'm surprised this 18-year-old girl just stays with him. She stays with him and puts up with his weird antics. Like, dude, leave this man. If he's got issues, get out. Get out. I just, oh boy, oh boy. And on top of that, this 30-year-old man already has kids. He has two kids and he doesn't pay attention to them. He neglects them. He doesn't even bond with them. He doesn't, e I bet he doesn't even look them in the eyes when he comes back from work. I get it. Being a part of a mafia businessman can be stressful, but that doesn't mean you have to just ignore your kids like they're ghosts. They're your kids. Sort of. Anyway, and there's animal abuse. Now, this man, his previous wife, wanted a dog. And he ended up getting the dog for her. But as soon as his wife, his previous wife, passed away, the, um, the dog reminded him of her. And he ends up mistreating that poor dog. End up throwing it in a storage closet. And not keeping it there forever, but keeping it in there for most of the time. It would just scratch at the door wanting to be out. And he would just be, the poor puppy would just be covered in knots. Its fur would be a mess. It probably stinks. I swear. This, this man with this aunt, this poor dog. And as soon as the 18-year-old woman comes into this 30-year-old man's life and sees the poor dog, the reasonable thing she did was, you know, fixed up the dog from its horrible mess. You know, gave it a bath, cut off its poor knots, little little messed up fur. And But the most reasonable thing she could have done right after she cleaned up the poor puppy and gave it a makeover, she could have given the dog to a nice loving family instead of just keeping it and telling her new husband, hey, you better treat this dog right or I'm going to dump your ass. Like... I really wish this dog could have just gone somewhere else. This dog deserves better in this book. This dog does not have the right to be treated by this third-year-old man with issues. And the last thing that is much worse in this book is that the shocking twist of this book is that 30-year-old man, his previous wife that passed away, she had an affair with her half brother and it turns out apparently the main male male character's kids they're not his kids apparently his previous wife when he had the when she had the affair it turns out she became pregnant with her half brother's children what are you what oh boy this uh. This is the reason, this is one of the reasons why I hate this book with a passion. Sometimes I question, why do people like this book? I get it, it's their opinion, but oh, this book is so horrible. Like, if I had the chance, which I do, I have a choice. If I had a choice to give that book a zero out of 10, I pretty much did. I give that book a zero out of 10, but the other books I mentioned, they're just a one out of 10, but that book, Sweet Temptation, is a zero out of 10. If I had a chance to put it in the trash bag and burn it with fire until it turns into ashes, I could do it, but I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna end up wasting a book and it would end up wasting paper, you know? You gotta recycle. And also, I like to give some honorable mentions to other books that I didn't, you know, mention at all. The last thing he told me, um, pe the people we meet on vacation, and the luckiest girl alive. Which, excuse me, fun fact is that the luckiest girl alive is the the one of the first books I only read halfway through. I read this book halfway through, and it was so boring to me that. I just couldn't read the rest of the book. I only read halfway and just gave up after that. And I know a lot of people love that book. They love The Luckiest Girl Alive, and that's good. And if you you like it, good for you. It's just, it was not for me. It was never for me to begin with. It just, I heard how good it was, but then as soon as I read it, garbage to me. Hot garbage to me. And so are the other books I've mentioned in this video. So let me know down in the comments what your least favorite book is. 
Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Like, comment, share, subscribe, all that jazz. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.